Hey there, Chris here. Thank you very much for joining me for this feedback video. And first of all, thank you so much for the response to our video that we made earlier in the week. Uh, I think it's the most popular video we've ever done and it's definitely the video that got the most comments. And thank you so much to all of you who submitted your writing and submitted your essays. And this video is going to give you feedback on those essays to help you understand some of the things that you did well, some of the things that you didn't do so well to help you improve. Um, so if you didn't watch the lesson, um, so the lesson was on how we helped the student move from 6.5 to a band eight in quite a short period of time. All of the principles and all of the fundamentals that we taught are in that lesson. You'll get that lesson in the description below so the feedback might not make a lot of sense if you haven't watched that video so click that video and you can go and watch that and then you can do some writing and look at this feedback video because even if you don't get individual feedback in this video by looking at the general principles that we talk about in this video it's really really going to help you improve so check that out if you haven't done so already so I think over a hundred of you in 24 hours uh, sent me your essays and commented below the video. So thank you very much for that. Obviously in a, you know, like a 20, 25 minute video, I can't give individual feedback to everybody. So what I decided to do was look at some essays that had very common mistakes in them. So mistakes that a lot of you made and also very important mistakes and by important, I mean that if you fix them, you will see an improvement in your writing score. So we're going to look at some typical mistakes first. Then we're going to look at an essay that was quite good, but had a lot of just little small mistakes in them uh, or in it. And we're going to help that person. And then we're going to look at a person who didn't write a a perfect essay. None of you wrote a perfect essay. The perfect essay doesn't really exist. We're going to look at someone who followed the general principles and fundamentals taught in the lesson and did quite a good job. So thank you very much and let's get... Okay, so as mentioned at the beginning of the video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some common problems. So problems that I saw again and again and again so that you can learn from those and fix those problems in your own writing. Obviously, I just cannot give detailed feedback on every single essay, and this is not the normal feedback that I would give students. I would give them a lot more detail, um, but I think this is the best way to help thousands of you at the same time um, rather than spend like five to six hours <laughs> um, making a video uh, that is not related to your specific problems. So, a very common problem um, in the set of essays that we looked at, and this is a very, very common problem in general, is a focus on vocabulary. Now, vocabulary is important. It's 25% of your total mark, but what a lot of students do, and this is a perfect example, is they think vocab first. So they think that if they use some impressive vocabulary, that is going to lead to a higher score, and that's all that really matters. And it's to the detriment of everything else. 25% of your score is going to be for grammar, so if you're using vocabulary incorrectly, you're often making grammar mistakes as well, because you you don't understand what's actually happening within that sentence. Also, it can lower the coherence, so 25% coherence and cohesion. If you don't understand what's, what's happening in the essay, if the reader doesn't understand, it's lowering the coherence because you're using vocabulary that just doesn't make any sense. It can also affect task response um, inadvertently because if you are focusing solely on vocabulary, you're not focusing on actually answering the question, answering the specific question, which is the main thing that you need to be doing. So let's have a look here. Diversity of problems, I don't know what that means, has been emerging in terms of food uh, don't really understand what that sentence means because this person has thought diversity of problems emerging in terms of food, that that's going to impress someone, it doesn't. Uh, engineered food, what is engineered food? Th that doesn't really make any sense. Compulsion to the nature, again, doesn't make any sense. Total seclusion from this is not feasible. <laughs> Why not just say this is unavoidable? Um, I know what you're trying to say, but if you just had used simpler language, 
this is unavoidable, that's far more impressive than total seclusion from this is not feasible because it doesn't really make any sense. Again, luxurious food, uh, fast food, processed food and luxurious food are two widely different things. McDonald's is processed food, fast food. It is definitely not luxurious food, no matter where you are in the world. Um, so uh, this is, is a very typical example of someone who thinks vocab first. And this is probably not the student's fault at all. This is probably because they have been given a list of words and that implies, that tells a student that all you have to do is just memorize lots and lots of words, put these high level words into your essay and you'll you'll really impress the examiner. The, the opposite is true for the reasons that we've talked about. You'll also find a lot of YouTube videos and Facebook videos and things like that that say, you know, use these five words or use these ten words to really impress the examiner. They're made by people who want clicks on their videos that are trying to make money through advertising. They're not teachers. They don't really know how to help you with that. So be very, very careful who you listen to. So let's have a look at this one. So this is a very good example of someone who has one or two common grammar errors. And if they fix these common grammar errors, they would really, really improve their grammar. So many students think that in order to improve your grammar you have to do like a whole grammar course and you know learn every single thing in a, in a grammar book but the reality for most students doing the IELTS test is especially students who need like a seven or above most of your grammar is is okay you do make some careless mistakes but most of the most of your grammar is fine because you're at that kind of level that 6.57 7.5 level already but what's stopping most of you moving from 6.5 to a 7 in terms of grammar is you have one or two areas of grammar where you, you make a mistake nearly every time. So if you have a look at this person, nearly all of their grammar mistakes are countable, uncountable nouns, uh, verb subject agreement, uh, plural versus singular. They're all kind of interrelated areas of grammar. Um, so this person struggles with mostly countable, uncountable nouns and verb subject agreement. The rest a lot of their, uh, the rest of their grammar is okay. Uh, there's some careless mistakes in there, but overall it's quite good. So if this person just focused on these key areas, these key areas of weakness, and they looked at the differences between countable and uncountable nouns, they looked at the rules for verb subject agreement, and they practiced that, and they got feedback on that, they would really, really improve their grammar. Um, and for you, this might be true, it might be countable, uncountable nouns, or it might be something like prepositions, or punctuation, or tenses, or articles is a big one. So find out what your common grammar error is, or common grammar errors are, um, and you can uh, really, really improve your grammar. Next one was, a lot of you had multiple main ideas in your paragraphs. So if we have a look here, this happened due to busy lifestyle and higher prices for fresh products. So they're putting in two main, two main ideas into their first main body paragraph. Uh, people have less time, and another crucial factor is money. Um, so this means that this person never really fully develops either uh, of their ideas. If you're hoping to get one of the higher bands, if you're hoping to go up to like the seven, eights and nines, you need to fully develop your answers. And let's have a look at what happens with their example. The prime examples are the local shops which mostly sell prepared to eat food, for instance fast food, and have a big income. So they're, they're kind of straddling between both of these ideas and trying to include both of these ideas in one example and not really doing either of them. Um, if you try and do both for both things, then you're not really going to satisfy either of them. It's much, much better just to have one main idea, fully explain that main, main idea, fully develop it by providing evidence in the term, in, in, in a specific relevant example that helps you, uh, rather than trying to do too many things at once. Um, again, this is probably not, not the student's fault either. This is the way they've been taught to write essays in the past or they followed some structure or something like that um, but just make sure that you fully develop your main body paragraphs with with them um, with your one main idea in one paragraph so very very common uh, I don't know whether this is uh, a typing issue or a um, 
or an actual paragraphing issue, but many of you just had no paragraphs whatsoever. So this is the whole uh, whole essay. Now, you might say, oh, well, it's obvious that these are the paragraphs here and that there. And if you look here, you know, maybe that. And if you just did that, Chris, of all, of course, it's going, those are the correct paragraphs. And the person just had a formatting issue. Uh, the reader of an essay or the reader of, of an email or the reader of a text message, it doesn't matter what it is, they're not supposed to do your job for you. Your job is to make the writing clear and easy to understand. An examiner or some or your boss reading an email is not going to really spend the time trying to figure out where one uh, paragraph ends and the next begins. You're supposed to do that for them. Um, and, and you're throwing away really, really easy marks. It's the simplest thing in the world just to do this, do this, and I think to do this. Um, and, and you're just increasing... The, the coherence and the quality and the cohesion of everything and it's really you know makes it much much easier you're making the examiner's job easier a lot of you just didn't address the question so uh, this probably comes down to thinking about the question to you know not really thinking about the question or thinking about it too quickly not spending the time to actually think about what is going on this essay will discuss the probable reasons behind the change of food uh, eating habits what reason and its possible consequences. What consequences? Uh, please tell me. And and many people ask me, you know, why do you always get your students to put the main ideas into the introduction? Is this necessary? Like, is it absolutely essential? No, it's not actually absolutely essential. But what it does is, number one, it tells the reader exactly what is coming up so it makes your ideas very very clear and easy to understand so you're helping the reader know how you are addressing task response and coherence and cohesion and also it helps you so it helps you organize your essay because you know what you're going to write about um, and if you look at the rest of this essay it's very very clear that this person didn't really think about what they were doing before they started writing and the result was they didn't really answer the specific question um, you know if you need a 5.5 or a 6 or something like that you can get away with not really addressing the specific question as much as someone who needs a band 7 or a band 8 but if you need a band 7 or a band 8 you must Think about the specific question, what it's actually asking you to do, and then show that you've understood and addressed that in the actual paper, or putting pen to paper and actually writing the answer. Um, word count. Many of you did not satisfy the word count. A really good website is wordcounter.net. does exactly what it says. Um, so I put this essay in here and 204 words. So, uh, you know, to satisfy task response and to, to develop your main ideas, you need to really be writing over 250 words. Uh, just as we're here, word counter is quite good for showing you keyword density. Um, so some of those words that you might have repeated that you uh, could maybe vary a little bit. It helps you with that. It also shows you the reading level, uh, college student, so reading level is quite good. Um, but you need to improve the word count on this. Again, throwing away easy marks. Um, someone who has no paragraphs and doesn't satisfy the word count, you're, you're throwing away the easiest marks, which is just like go over the word count and, and put in paragraphs. This person uh, maybe comes from a region of the world where they do not write essays in the same way people from you know the US, the UK, Ireland would write essays. Uh, not not that one is better than the other, but the IELTS test is designed for you know it's designed by Cambridge. Uh, it's aimed at people who want to go and live in Australia, New Zealand. Ireland, the UK, Canada, America, the English-speaking world. In the, in the English-speaking world, there is a defined way, really, of, of writing an essay. There's some variation on that. But in other parts of the world, uh, there might not be the same, you know, the, the same methodology but behind writing an essay. And this is why we share different structures for different types of essays with our students, because it helps them understand what they're supposed to be doing, what's in an introduction, what's in a main body paragraph, what a topic sentence is, how to develop main ideas, what a conclusion is. This person has maybe looked at that, um, but their, their old way of doing things is kind of creeping in. So there's no real defined 
you know, introduction, where are the main body paragraphs, within the main body paragraphs, where are the topic sentences, where are the explanations. So this person, you know, could improve dramatically by just understanding basic paragraph structure, what an introduction is, main body paragraph conclusion, and that would really, really help them um, with their, their writing skills because it is a, you know, it's an English test, but it's also a writing test, a speaking test, a listening test, a reading test. You need to develop those skills. Uh, for this person, um, a lot of you had this where you are trying to vary your language for certain keywords, but doing but doing it unsuccessfully. Canned food is not really the same um, as the word you're trying to replace. Canned food is is a example of that, but you wouldn't really use that. Um, so this person, especially when you start off with canned food. You're basically saying, I think this is all about canned food, which is a very, very specific area. Um, so it's maybe better to just either use a synonym that actually means the same thing or to repeat the word. Some words, for example, you know, food, there are a certain number of ways that you can vary that. But then you get to a limit where you start taking too many chances and you make mistakes. Uh, so if I'm looking at this, this introduction, is this person talking about canned food or processed food or fast food? What are they really talking about? Um, and I think this comes from many people believing that you just cannot repeat a word. You really cannot repeat any word. And if you repeat a word, you'll get a really low score. You should vary your language as much as possible, but as much as possible. And then they go and they repeat words over and over and over again, which kind of defeats the purpose of trying to change it, but changing it incorrectly. Um, this is an example of somebody who wrote quite a good essay, um, but and it is good, but lots of little mistakes kind of add up. Um, and for, for many people, this can be the, the really frustrating thing that they're quite good at writing an essay, their grammar is quite good, their vocabulary is quite good, their task response, their coherence and cohesion, but they're making multiple frequent mistakes in all areas throughout their essay. And this can be why they keep getting 6.5. Um, this is very, very common. So let's have a look at this. So some negative consequences of this tendency I mean, that, that's okay, it's not absolutely essential that you put your main ideas in there, but I would think it would help the reader and help the, the person writing this really hone in on, on their ideas. Also, we'll talk about this when we get down there, but they talk about mul the multiple main ideas and then they use multiple main ideas in their paragraph. I know many of you will be saying, it asks for effects, plural, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, here, for example, this isn't really ex an example. For example, in order to cook a meal, they have to spread, spend hours driving to grocery stores, buying fresh ingredients and cooking. That's an explanation. That's not an example. So this person might think that they're writing a good example, but that's not evidence. That's just your opinion, really, and talk and helping explain things a bit more. It's very small mistake here with, with grammar. Overall, their grammar is very, very good. There are two possible adverse effects. Okay, so let's talk about this. So consequences, plural, two possible adverse effects. So you're quite right in thinking that it says effects, which is multiple, uh, you know, more than one. However, you really, if if you're going to include more than one in your paragraph, you are left with two bad choices. Choice number one is to fully develop both of them. That means that your main body paragraph is going to be like, you know, two to three hundred words long. You don't really have time to write two to three hundred words in one paragraph. You probably don't have time to write three hundred words in your whole essay. Some people do, some people don't. But you see my point. You must develop both all of your main ideas. So if you're trying to do that, you're going to run out of time. So that's option one. Option two is not develop your main ideas. So that's going to mean that you don't satisfy the marking criteria because if it's okay if you need like a band 5.5 or something like that, but if you need one of the higher bands, you need to fully develop your ideas. So you're left with two kind of bad choices that will probably lead to you getting a lower score. Now, this is something that I have spoken to many, many students about because on my courses, I tell students, if it says plural, just write one. 
and they always say, well, that means you're not answering the question. So I actually took this and put this to many, many senior IELTS examiners, and we have multiple IELTS examiners working for the company, and they all agree that it's much, much better to put in just one and fully develop that, and the IELTS examiners will recognize that within there. I know it's a bit that's a bit controversial and many of you will argue with me about that but that's basically what I've asked you know more than 10 examiners including very very senior examiners um, you know examiners that assess other examiners and train other examiners uh, ask them that question and also it's borne out in the data from my students the students who don't believe me and go and write multiple uh, main ideas in one paragraph they often fail and when they start using just one they often pass and um, so it's borne out in you know testimony from from examiners and from the data from our students as well so you don't have to agree with us but that's that's my opinion on that um, so they talk about multiple um, different things here multiple different ideas which is a problem um, and they have, you know, a few little grammar issues, uh, issues with tenses. Um, they also have a paragraphing issue here. So this person is probably looking at this and going, ah, you know, I, I wrote a good essay. I'm good enough. Yes, you are. Um, but you probably just need a little bit of feedback and work on just a few small things. And with that, this person could probably raise their score pretty quickly. Um, this is you know a student this type of student love working with this type of student because they're doing lots of little things incorrectly that are adding up to a low score and if they they can really really quickly um, fix these mistakes and, and lead to dramatic improvements in their score this one was not perfect um, but I thought this was pretty good because it it basically followed the fundamentals there weren't that many uh, mistakes in it there weren't that many grammar and vocabulary errors in it overall it was a very very solid essay not perfect but pretty good so let's read this one uh, people consume more processed food than they used to in previous years this is because processed food is easily prepared and this will have dire consequences on their health so paragraph the or paraphrase the question introduced both of their main ideas good the main reason for the increased use of processed food is that it takes less time to prepare than traditional meals clear topic sentence most people do not have the time to cook because they work long hours so it's a very small mistake here and um, so they use processed food an employee who is getting home after an exhausting day at work will probably prefer to use ready to use meals than standing in the kitchen for two hours again good at clear explanation for example, a recent study showed that processed food use, use has increased over the past 10 years in urban areas and major cities where people work for longer hours. Yep, clear example. This will result in less healthy individuals in society, or probably better just to delete that. This will result in less healthy individuals. This is because processed food contains fewer nutrients, such as vitamins and minerals, which are essential for a healthy diet. Our bodies depend on these nutrients to develop and fight microbes. I don't know whether that's factually accurate, but it's not a fact. It's not a, you know, a test on microbiology. So don't worry too much about that. Moreover, processed food is rich in cheap fats, which are responsible for many serious illnesses like diabetes. Okay, so it's linked to health. Uh, I probably would have stuck to talking about nutrients and further explained how nutrients are, are important and how the, you know the connection with food and everything um, oh, but overall that's not a big deal uh, for instance research recent research found that people who depend on processed food as their main diet are more susceptible to infectious diseases um, a clear example I don't know whether that's true or not um, but a, an examiner looking at that isn't going to go and find some medical textbook and try and look that up or anything like that um, but to provides evidence that supports the main point which is the main thing in conclusion people use more processed food these days because they are extremely busy and do not have enough time to prepare their meals however this will neg negatively affect their health and they may suffer from chronic diseases in the future summarizing both main ideas their uh, their position is very very clear they've developed their main points most of their grammar is fine few small errors most of their vocabulary is fine few small errors overall very very solid um, and and you know it was a pleasure to help this person um, improve to this level uh, and you know help them out with 
with how to how to how to finish this essay. So, well done to that person, whoever it is. So, apologies that I couldn't get to every single person, but what you should do is look at your essay and think, how's my vocabulary? How's my grammar? How are my ideas? Are they well developed? Do I have multiple ideas or not? How's my paragraphing? Did I address the question? Did I develop my main ideas? Word count, how is that? Structure, how is that? Um, and vocabulary, what's that like? And then think about that and you'll probably look at your essay and you'll be able to see, like this person, multiple little problems with it. And then you can fix those problems and really, really improve quite quickly. Um, you know, it's, I'm not saying that you can improve in 10 minutes or anything like that, um, but the, the process that you need to go through is learning what to do, doing those things, you know, learning how to write an essay, writing an essay, getting feedback on that, and learning from your mistakes is the most important thing. Let's just have a quick check to see this person satisfy the word limit. I think they did. No, one short. <laughs> so, to improve this essay, there's always things to improve. To improve this essay, a person could just add in a little bit of things. So if they're doing the computer-based um, one, they could go in and edit it, add in just you know a word here or there, make sure that the word makes sense, um, or they could add you know an extra thing in here, or um, if they were doing the um, doing a paper-based one, they could add in something here or they could add in something here, or they could um, you know, delete something. Uh, let me see. So there's lots of little ways that you could add in things here for one or two hours. Main reason for the increased use of processed food is that it takes less time to prepare than traditional fuels in the home or just some basic stuff like that and um, you could add that in time to prepare them uh, yeah and now we're up to 254 so always areas to improve and if you improve them you will see improvements in your scores hopefully you find that useful guys um, and if you need any help feel free to get in touch so hopefully as you can see from that video you know, everybody who's learning how to write an IELTS essay makes mistakes. There's no such thing as a perfect essay. But the important thing to remember is that mistakes are an opportunity for you to improve. You shouldn't look at mistakes as evidence that you're never going to get the score that you need. Instead, have the complete opposite mindset, which is, I've made a mistake, that's great, that's an opportunity for me to improve. So if you think about IELTS writing in that way, you're going to see massive improvement because you will be taking action on your mistakes and seeing that improvement in your writing. So two little things before we go. Number one, if you want extra help with your IELTS writing, we do have a free course called the IELTS Writing 5-Day Challenge, and you can find that in the description below. It'll give you all the help you need over five days with five lessons and five tasks for you to complete, and it's totally free. If you need more attention and you would like my one-on-one -on -one attention and you would like help with your writing, we do have a VIP course. We only work with a very, very small number of students on that due to the level of of help that we need to give a student. Um, so for example, instead of us giving just general feedback on your essay, we'll correct every grammar mistake, every vocabulary mistake, give you detailed uh, feedback on every paragraph, tell you your score for you know, task response, coherence and cohesion, uh, grammar, vocabulary, absolutely everything, and give you a very, very detailed report on your writing, which is just a small part of the VIP course. If you are interested in that, interested in working with me personally, feel free to email me, chris at ieltsadvantage.com, and we'll see if you're a good fit for the course. See you soon. Bye-bye.